Well, with me in the studio is Sir Salman and Al Ansari, the founder and president of the Saudi American Public Relations Affairs uh, Committee, uh, who works to strengthen ties between the two countries. Thank you for joining us. You know uh, MBS well. You know it. You, you know him personally. Uh, I was intrigued. I think a lot of Brits were about the poster campaign on his arrival uh, on billboards and buses. Was there an element that perhaps this trip? could have gone a lot worse. Is there relief, perhaps, that the thing hadn't been hijacked by anti-Saudi protests? OK, thank you, Tim, for having me. Uh, indeed, it's a, a great opportunity to speak about this vision, Saudi Vision 2030. And Mohammed bin Salman, who is the engineer of such vision, is a big reformer, is a big dreamer. And I think uh, Saudi in general right now, uh, specifically the youth, because we are speaking of 70% of the Saudi population are under the age of 30 years old. And Mohammed bin Salman is matching that characteristic of, of his population. And he puts faith in his people, while the Iranian Khamenei puts faith in but, but nuclear warheads. But why, war, why, war why the need for this advanced uh, propaganda, or this advanced media campaign? I think there are, rivalry, there are rivals, definitely. Uh, we can name them, Qatar and Iran. They are behind every uh, propaganda or almost every propaganda that uh, goes against Saudi Arabia. Uh, they do not like to see progress in Saudi-UK relationships. They do not want to see Saudi Arabia to, to maintain its role as the leader of the Arab and Muslim world. And they are doing it, Saudis are actually doing it in a good way where they preserve the dignity and uh, uh, each country's constitutions, etc. But they want development and progress for the Arab world. I, I mean, a lot is happening very quickly, isn't it? I mean, in particular, the, the liberalization for, for women in Saudi Arabia, that's very eye-catching uh, here in the West, being allowed to drive, being allowed to sort of mingle with, with uh, uh, men, it, it, men in public. But there are critics of MBS who would say he's not the great modernizer. He's not the great reformer. He's actually, he uh, displays all the despotic instincts uh, of... Uh, it's, of the Saudi yeah. royal family before. It, it's actually interesting that I hear such uh, uh, rumors and such kind of uh, uh, propaganda against the crown prince because if you look at the reforms that he has done for the last three years, it equals to the reforms of the kingdom for the last 30 years. So, um, Hamad bin Salman, no one can doubt the fact that he is a big reformer. I actually, like, w bef before I go to any interview, any TV interview, I get kind of lost. What should I talk about? There are so much that has happened during the th last three years. Mohammed bin Salman was a champion for women's rights. Nobody can deny that. And you can see Saudi women who can speak about uh, this fact. He actually made them. I know the idea of women driving is uh, silly to be discussed, but it's actually something that happened uh, uh, at a time when we had this kind of societal changes. Because I consider the societal reforms and the cultural and religious reforms of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is far more important than the economic reforms itself. Why? Because Saudi Arabia, whenever it does something, the Arab and Muslim world will follow. Okay, uh, human rights issues, and I want to come on to Yemen uh, uh, as well. Not the big demonstrations that perhaps had been anticipated, but Amnesty International, for example, says that under uh, the effective rule of uh, MBS, human rights haven't improved that much, actually. You know, Shia dissidents have been uh, executed, people uh, are still going through bogus trials, uh, people aren't allowed to criticise publicly yeah. uh, in print. I mean, how do you answer that? I mean, is this work in progress? Do you accept that more needs to be done there? Okay, I think we need to look at the societal context of such things. I think international human rights organisations are not very uh, uh, deep on their analysis when it comes to understanding the Saudi codes and the Saudi society kind of uh, fabric. Why? Because, let's be very frank, in Saudi, we used to have the Muslim Brotherhood and the Sururi groups to be controlling the Saudi society mindset. And this group, which is the Muslim Brotherhood, was actually having agendas of international uh, uh, um, uh, bodies that want to make the Saudi youth to be uh, uh, in such a position where they go against the government in a constant uh, battle and by applying the Islamic version that they see, which is radical. And Saudi Arabia wants to change that forever. Yeah. And for that reason, Saudi Arabia was actually harsh and strong and decisive on confronting those people who want to poison the youth to, uh, 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 for example, justify extremist uh, and, 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 and that is part of his campaign as well, to so root out uh, extremism. Someone, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry we're out of time. Oh, but no thank you very thank much, you much so much for joining us uh, here on uh, GMT.